Hello there, this is Mikhail or Michael speaking, and today, without further ado, I will touch on the changes that happened in Ukraine in the last day or two. So, first of all, we go to the south of Bakhmut. Here, Russians had developed their success around Avangard Stadium and Mariupolska Street. They had recently captured this much territory from Ukrainians along the street. Yesterday, they did not control that territory, but as of right now, they had successfully pushed Ukrainians out of this sector. They are now attacking beyond this sector to help Russian effort on this front. Here, Russians had also captured this much territory. Again, they are creeping ever close to the high raised building in this area to help Russians advancing near Avangard Stadium. Here, Russians are attacking as well, but Ukrainians are repelling Russian attacks, as well as in this sector near the city center. Recently, Russians had captured a small portion of land here. This is how it looks like. And they are attacking along this big street right here. If we go slightly to the southwest, we can see that Russians had not gained much territory here, but creeping ever close to this road right here. The reasons why Russians are not successful here as much, once again, like I said in the previous video, is because the Ukrainians had reinforced the center with their elite troops. Russians are also attacking in these directions. From here we go to the north of the Bakhmut city where Russians are attacking from the Azom Steel towards other facilities that are located here. They're also fighting in this sector as well. In this sector, Wagner troops had attacked from this street right here. This is the amount of territory they were able to capture in the last day or two. They are also captured some of the parts here. So you can see how they are simultaneously attacking in a lot of directions. While we are in Bakhmut city, I want to show you a video of the night bombardments of this city. Now, just imagine how much damage does this bombardment do? How many Ukrainian soldiers are dying being struck by those shells or dying beneath the rubble of the destroyed buildings? Speaking of night battles, we have to understand that the Wagner troops are also conducting attacks at night. Due to some specifics of how Wagner group is working, they are sometimes armed even better than Russian Spetsnaz. So they have night visions and better equipment suitable for night battles. And that's what they are doing. There are a lot of snipers in the city and there are occasional sniper duels that are happening here. Now to the north, there are reports that Russians are attacking from this forest, which suggests that they had captured this forest and now had started fighting for Hramova. Here Russians are attacking towards village of Bogdanivka, Grigorivka and are continuously fighting for the Arikhovo Vasilivka. Now there are reports coming in that Russians had reached Bogdanivka and started fighting within its streets. Hey, if you liked my video so far, please consider liking, subscribing and commenting as it is good for the algorithms. If you had already done so, I thank you very, very much and I hope you have a great day. Now let's go to the Seversk front. The Russians are attacking towards village of Veselye as well as Spirne and Verkhokamyansky. They are heavily bombarding every settlement that is near and around this front line in order to disrupt Ukrainian logistics and not allow them to rotate their troops as effectively as they could. Situation in Belokharivka is stabilizing. For the last two weeks, Russians and Ukrainians were engaged in positional fighting here. However, recently Ukrainians counter-attacked Russians and Russians lost two weeks worth of fighting. Heavy fighting continues in this forested area as well as near Zarichne. Russians are carefully attacking along this entire front, but for the most part it is artillery that's saying its word. So all the settlements along this line is being heavily bombarded by the Russian artillery. 
Situation in Kupiansk stays the same. Russians are continuously trying to expand their zone of control near Grenikivka and Dvorichne. They are attempting attacks over Oskar River towards Dvorichne, as well as they are trying to capture Mesutivka and Sinikivka. From here we go all the way down where Avdiivka is. Situation near Krasnoharivka had not changed. It would seem that both Russian and Ukrainians had lost their advancement potential and are now busy with regrouping and establishing stronger defensive positions where they had stopped last time. Situation in Kamianska is difficult and hard to tell as some reports suggest that Kamianka had fallen to the Russians and other reports suggest that Ukrainians are still holding there. But as you can see, Kamianka is nearly encircled. So I'm surprised that this village is holding out for so long. It would seem that Russians had stopped attacking from Apitne towards Avdivka as of right now, but they are still attacking from Vadane towards Severne and Tonenke. Once again, Russians are heavily shelling all these settlements in attempt to disrupt Ukrainian rotation and supply. From Vadane and Piski, Russians are attacking towards Pervomaisky. They are capturing more and more land to the north of Pervomaisky, as well as successfully advancing to its center. No success is reported in Nevelsky. From Nevelsky we go to the Marinka, where changes had actually occurred. Now it would seem the Russians had captured city center, for which they were fighting for some time now. And there are videos that suggest that whenever Ukrainians are trying to reinforce the Marinka center, Russians just bombard this part of the city, not letting Ukrainians help their brother in arms in this sector. So maybe that's how this Russian success is explained. As of village of Pobeda, Russians are still unable to capture it as of right now. From here we go to Novomikhailivka, where Russians are also attacking in this direction, but it would seem that they are attacking very carefully, and once again it is safe to say that perhaps a positional style warfare is happening here as well. From Novomikhailivka we go to the Vuglidar, which is the last city on our list. Now, Russians are still battling out for the control over the Dacha area, as well as fighting in the direction of the mines. Heavy shelling of Vuglidar continues, and more and more photos are coming in that the city is nearly destroyed. One more thing I want to say about Bakhmut while I'm still here. It's been reported that the official Russian army had reinforced this entire front line to help Wagner troops fight within the city. If you remember about two weeks ago, Wagner group owner Prigozhin has said that the situation is getting worse and worse and his flanks are exposed and there are reports coming in that Russians had to deal with it. It is recently found out that there is a tunnel that is used for supplying Bakhmut that ends in Chasifyar. So perhaps Russians are reinforcing front lines in order to finally attack towards Chasifyar city itself. This Russian reinforcements is also putting a big question mark under the possible Ukrainian counteroffensive near Bakhmut as the entire front line is filled with Russian troops. Overall, there won't be a situation that happened near Kharkiv as at this point Russians have more than enough troops to stop Ukrainian counteroffensive. Anyway, this is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Humanity as always calls me to condemn all violence against human beings. Hope you have a good day and always remember, Russia will be free.